Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rohit and this is the 11th day of the service portal training. In this training, we'll talk about that SP model. What is the SP model and how it's differed from the normal pop-up in our JavaScript. So basically, SP model is nothing but it's a, a dependency in the service portal that can help you to show some modal window or that uh, modal page where you can see some pop-up kind of fillings. Similar functionality is already there in our JavaScript, but how it's differed from the normal JavaScript to this SP model, we'll discuss that point one by one. And also we'll build a complete new widget. From the new widget, we'll implement this SP model one by one. So without wasting time, let's get started. So this is our normal service portal uh, that uh, we are building that portal training page where we are uh, um, already customized some widgets but today we'll create going to create a new widget and using this new widget we are going to implement that sp model um, dependency which is present to the service mode service now for that what i have to do i have to go back to this service portal under this service portal we have a uh, module you know already that service portal configuration and here I'm going to create a new widget here. So for that, what I'll do, I'll click the pre, uh, create new widget and where I'm going to create a complete new widget because I don't want to uh, change the code which is existing. Um, so uh, for the timing, I'm going to create a new widget called name is the test. Later we'll rename that and click submit. So this widget is available right now. I will enable that preview mode so that whatever changes I'll do that, the same changes are reflect in my uh, right side. And now what I'll do, I'll enable the HTML button. And here I am going to, uh, for the example, actually, I'm going to create a button called refresh. So I'll say that button. And in this button, I'll say that refresh. So this button name is nothing but a refresh. And once we click that, maybe this page will be reload or something these kind of things will be happening but refresh is not our actual goal our goal is actually how it uh, differ from normal javascript alert or pop-up to that sp model and how sp model help us to uh, do um, uh, the benefits okay what all the benefits we have in that sp model so let's say here i'm going to uh, type that ng click here so using the ng click, I am going to call um, the button. Whenever somebody click the button, I am going to call a function to that um, you know that client script. So I'll say that uh, c dot refresh. This function I am going to call that, and this same function I am going to declare in my here call c dot. Uh, I mean same function here. Now my function is declared. So when somebody click that refresh button this function will be invoked the line number from five will be invoked and i'm going to call a alert message call hi the page will be reload so this is my uh this is my uh, alert message that i'm going to show you and that's how the alert message or this alert message is provided by javascript itself so there is nothing needs to be done so if i click refresh button I am getting a pop-up or the alert message that is showing on uh, on browser itself and then this browser is giving me some alert. So this alert, how can I convert this alert to our SP model? So for that, what we have to do, first of all, uh, and how, how different that normal alert to the SP model, that thing also will discuss that. So for that, what we have to do, we have to do inject a dependency that dependency name is sp model that we already talked about and this sp model we are going to use in here for that i'll type one more type sp model once you inject that sp model here in the top your uh, this same code will be as a blue color if i remove that you can see that this is not no more blue so make sure you inject that in the top on the, the function and here uh, what i'll do i'll do the same thing okay but before going to that this part what i just want to show you that uh, so what will be happen after you click this button called refresh and click ok what will be happen whatever code is written after line number five will be executed so let's say i'm going to actually refresh that 
for that what I'll do I will uh, type the window dot location dot reload this function I will invoke and then uh, what will be happen once somebody click OK the page will be refreshed let's first see that so once I click the refresh the alert message is coming and then once I click OK the page is getting refreshed and you can see the button is showing again so this is how the refresh is working so instead of this one what I'll do uh, I will uh, move this code from here to here so it means that first it will show my JavaScript alert then it will be show my SP bullet al SP model alert and then after that it will refresh that so this is how I am um, trying to uh, compare between this JavaScript um, alert to our SP model alert so let's see first we click that um, refresh button it shows that hi this page is uh, reload this is the JavaScript uh, alert which is coming from line number 5 and once we click OK you can see the second alert came up but it does not stop it immediately refresh that so if I click OK you can see the whole code line number 5 is hold until unless I click OK but the second alert came up and then line number 7 is executed so it does not hold for the line number 7 fine so I'll just remove this line for the time being and first compare between this normal alert and then SP model alert so let's see so I will click OK and then after that you can see this is how our uh, you know SP model alert will be looks like that so the, so try one more time um, we are doing to we are trying to do that if you click refresh this is how our normal uh, SP um, normal alert will came up in our browser or uh, in the top of the header but instead of that SP model came up instead of whole page and it will be blurred the background so this is the complete difference how you can see that SP model difference now if we click OK it should execute the next block but it is not waiting for that so it is going automatically to the next next block for that what we have to do we have to use the then function and here um, you can uh, define anything so I will say that function and here we will uh, use this code okay so I'll move this code here and paste here and let's say so previously it was not holding this browser but right now it should hold let's see so we we'll click the refresh the code is executed but right now you can see our code is holding until unless we click ok this uh, you know the line number 7 will not be executed so once we click ok then line number 7 is getting refreshed so basically you need to use the then function to use the ST modal to hold the code of the bottom line and you can see the complete difference between SP modal and then our normal alert okay so next do what we have so this is our one code so I will completely um, turn off this line so for whatever we have are done next we have one more um, uh, function called confirm so if we say that confirm and here we need to put the question okay so yes or no so what will be happen so let's say that I can so yeah where uh, decision so maybe decision and here I will uh, say that um, uh, do you want do you want to refresh okay and uh, this will be my question mark and if somebody select yes we will refresh that so if D I C and then we will refresh that so let's see first what is the difference and then we'll discuss further so now previously it was coming alert and there is no way that you can cancel or you can do anything you have to have refresh either you click cancel or either you do anything you click ok anything the page will be refreshed now what will be happen if you click ok it will came up with instead of ok button it will came up with the two button one is the cancel another is the ok so if you cancel that nothing will be happen it will be page will be remain as it is and this code line number 11 will not be executed because in this DIC it will return that value whatever value it is coming will be returned so it will be either true or false so if you click cancel the value will be false 
if you click ok the value will be true now if you click refresh and click ok the page will be refreshed so now you have or maybe the user have two options either they can cancel and or they can simply click ok to refresh the page so two options they have either they can refresh or the cancel by clicking this one so by they they can do these steps and then they can refresh or they can cancel that similar functionality it can be achieved through our sp uh, model also for that what we have to do uh, so this is how our uh, it was looks like that now for this uh, for our case what we'll do for sp model we'll type sp model and this time we'll say the confirm under the confirm whatever uh, message we want to ref, um, put that the same message will put here and after that what will be uh, what we can uh, do here then function so we'll type the then and inside the then we have a function and under this function we will get that answer okay and here we will uh, type that if answer then we are going to refresh otherwise we are not going to do okay so this is how our sp model looks like that so first i say that sp model dot confirm and then i put the message as it is and then i type the then under the then we i have put a bracket and this bracket i type the function and in bracket answer so yes or no the value yes or no that will return from the answer that will get from the answer and here i'm checking the answer equal to true or not if true i'm going to refresh or reload if not i'm not going to do that so now let's see um our expectation is working or not so we'll click the refresh and then i'm going to cancel that then our pop-up is came up this pop-up is um, the the uh, similar kind of pop-up but you can see this is the pop-up how it looks like that and we can simply cancel that in that case if we cancel that nothing will go, going to happen but if we click uh, ok and then here if we click the ok the page should be refreshed and you can see the page got refreshed okay so this way we can also uh, achieve our refresh functionality or we can achieve our confirm functionality so two things we discussed so far one is the alert and second is the confirm now let's see that we have one more option called input for um for input what we can do i'll just comment out this complete line that so far we have discussed so i'll comment out this line now what i'll do i will take an input and that input will be carried forward in later part okay maybe um some other cases okay so let's say for that what i will do where um you know uh, name or maybe something like that and here we will say that prompt and here we are going to uh, put the some message let's say that i'm going to say that please provide your name so this will be our prompt and then once we get this value what we will get that we will uh, you know um, we'll we'll um, uh, put that alert as the name so this name will pro prompt up once somebody uh, give that name so this is how the prompt looks like let's see first how javascript use the prompt so if we click refresh i am getting a box where i can put some input and based on that input i can um validate or i can do anything okay so let's say i'll say uh rohit here i'll do that and click ok and here you can see the next step i am getting the same name so what i'll do I can do a validation call if name equal to Rohit, then uh, say I'll say that or uh, I'll say that success. I'll show a message called success. Else I want to show the fail. This is how I just want to show here. So maybe this is how prompt looks like that. So we'll click the refresh button. And here I need to type something. So let's say that I'll say, uh, type HHH and then it will show the fill because this is going to the else block. But if I click refresh and then somebody put that name is uh, uh, Rohit and click OK, then I'm saying the success. So how or uh, where we can be useful this one? So this can be useful in our, uh, you know, uh, the widget that we have declared here. So let's say that here 
If somebody is trying to close that uh, instance, we will say that are you want to close? Yes or no? We can show that. Or maybe you can mention that like please type the confirm keyword to close the incident, something like that. So that we can be achieved there. So in our upcoming video, we'll do that. But for the timing, I'm talking about the prompt. So this is how our prompt looks like that. But how this prompt or uh, this can be overrided by our um, you know dependency called SP model. So let's see that. For SP model, what we have to do, we have to type SP model dot open. This function we need to be declared. In this function, what else we have to do? We need to pass some uh, you know parameter. First parameter is the title. In this case, what title we are going to pass that? So let's say that please provide your name or name uh, name details, something like that. Okay. So this might be our uh, pop up, and then secondly we have to be passed the message. So I'll say that message here and then here I will say that uh, the same uh, message that I am going to pass that. I'll copy that and paste here. And then what else we have to do? We have to put that, um, you know, that input equal to true. And then what we have to do? We have to calculate the value value equal to we have to declare something called um, c dot name okay and here before that i need to be declared that the c dot name uh, is something like that some uh, blank value okay and now so that's it so we put that all this now what will be happen we need to be declare one then function so the way we did earlier and here we need to put the function and under the function we need to be uh, pass that name and here what we have to do we have to uh, do the c dot name equal to name and now what we can do uh, we can validate that let's say that if name uh, let's say we can declare that if name equal to equal to Rohit and we want to show something called here we show something else we show something so this is might be our input parameter so I'll copy this one and paste here and this one I'll paste here okay so let's see that how it it's, uh, it's exactly looks our case so we we'll close that and refresh here it is coming as one pop-up. I'm just clicking cancel. So once you click the cancel, it will go to the fill. Now this came up with the name details in the here title. This is the message that we are getting. And here I'm putting that message equal to Rohit. Once you click the OK, I'm getting success. And if we, uh, you know, uh, click that something else, I should get the fill. So you can see I'm getting the fill. So this is how you can, uh, I mean, this is uh, how input method can be also achieved through our SP model. I think that's it for today. Uh, if you have any question, let me know my comment section. In our next session, we'll actually implement these, um, um, these things in our um, widgets. So um, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day.